Hello everybody, it's Nick from Last Tenth. Today, we're gonna settle an age-old debate. What's more important for acceleration, power or torque? I'm gonna show you in a very simple example which is more important and why. There's not much to it, so let's get started. Here's the too long didn't watch version. The short answer is a higher horsepower is generally more important than a higher torque for most street and race cars. But I know a short answer isn't why you subscribe to my channel. So let's look at the science. Yeah! As you may already know, there are tons of analogies out there and frankly, they're all BS. For example, I've heard torque equals acceleration and power equals top speed or power is how fast you hit the wall and torque is how far you take it with you. If you don't already know, there's a technical term for these analogies. It's superficial and unreliably compromised knowledge. Some people refer to it as suck. In truth, the explanation is much simpler than that. Torque is the twisting force that an engine produces. Like when you're using a screwdriver, you're applying torque to the screw. This is essentially how a car accelerates. The engine produces torque. Through the clutches, gears, differentials, wheels, and tires, it is converted to thrust at the contact patch. And thrust is what pushes a car forward during acceleration. If thrust accelerates a car, and thrust is a result of torque, torque should be what's important, right? Why should we care about power? The reason power is more important in practice is because of gearing. Now, here's the most important takeaway from this video. If there's one thing you learn from this, this is it. Even if the engine produces less torque at higher RPMs, as long as it is producing more power, you can select a shorter gear to produce more thrust. I know I've already lost you because that sounds super complicated. So I'm gonna show you an example and you're gonna get it. Here's an arbitrary torque power curve of a real car. It's a variant of a Porsche 911. And by the way, if you can figure out which one it is, leave it in the comments below and I'll flag the first correct answer. I'm gonna show you how we can achieve more thrust at peak power, even though torque is lower at that speed. This car's second gear has a ratio of 2.38. Let's say the car is traveling at 87 kilometers per hour in this gear. There's no particular relevance to the speed aside that it puts the engine at 6,000 RPM, at which it produces a peak torque of 339 foot-pounds. This also means that the car cannot achieve more acceleration in this gear than it is currently. Through the transmission, differentials, and rear wheels, the engine's torque turns into a theoretical thrust of 2,678 pounds, which accelerates the car. After 6,000 RPM, the torque begins to decrease and so does thrust and acceleration. But as I suggested before, if the power continues to increase like it does in this engine, we can find a shorter gear that can give us more thrust even if the engine produces less torque. For example, let's say we now use a gear that has a ratio of 3.27. To keep the comparison fair, the car will again be traveling at 87 kilometers per hour. But because of the different gear ratio, this time the engine will be running at 8,250 RPM instead, which so happens to be where peak power is being produced. However, at this RPM, the engine only produces 313 foot-pounds of torque, which as you can see is less than before. But even though it produces less torque, it generates 3,403 pounds of thrust, which is actually more than before. It can generate more thrust even with lower torque because of the higher gear ratio. The same engine traveling at the same speed, but you can achieve more acceleration at peak horsepower than at peak torque. As long as power continues to increase after peak torque, you will be able to achieve more acceleration at higher RPMs with a shorter gear. In fact, during maximum acceleration on this car, peak torque is not used in most of its gears, and instead the rev range around peak power is used. And there you have it. This is why power is more important and tiny high-strung engines can produce so much acceleration. 
Now that we know all of this, how do we use this information to go faster? What does this all mean to when you should shift? In my next video, I'm gonna teach you how to find the optimal shift point to maximize your acceleration. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it. In the meantime, keep sending it. I will see you next time. In a very simple model, theoretical thrust equals the engine's torque times the gear ratio times the final drive divided by the tire's radius. Here, we have excluded things like drivetrain loss, differential split, clutch slip, material flex, etc. So in reality, your thrust will be a bit lower than that. I'm sure some of you already know that power and torque are actually mathematically related. For example, power in horsepower is equal to torque in foot pounds times the engine speed in RPM divided by 5,252. Above 5,252 RPM, power is always higher than torque in these units. The number 5,252 is purely based on the units itself though. For example, if we use kilowatts and Newton meters instead, we should use the number 9,549.